Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra, and I'm going to take you through this 30-ish minutes or so morning yoga practice. And this is an intermediate, well-rounded flow. We're going to place special emphasis on hip openers, balancing poses, and some heart openers and back bends. Um, a little bit of strength, but really a good, stretchy, intermediate, full body practice. No props are required. So let's begin in a butterfly forward fold, Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together, knees falling apart. And I have a bit of soreness in my left hip today. So you might see me moving around or adjusting or just modifying a pose. That's the only reason why. So you can just fold on down. I'm gonna reach and crawl the hands forward, coming up onto the fingertips and really using this as a way for me to lift out of my lower back as much as possible. So I'm not folding all the way down like I normally would here. I'm really trying to focus on stretching through the sides of my waist and almost like I'm pushing my knees down towards the mat by slightly engaging my glutes. And you can just crawl your hands over to the right. You'll feel this a little bit more through the left side of your low back. See if you can really intend that left thigh and left knee to press down. And then over to the other side. See if you can find a little more length, more space, push that right knee down. And come back through to center and now let yourself fold forward passively here. Take three deep breaths. And I want you to use primarily arm strength to get yourself out of this pose. So walking your hands in by inch, inch by inch, and roll up nice and slow all the way. And we'll open our legs into a straddle. I've been doing this a lot in the morning. So as you open your legs, all I'm gonna do is bend my knees a little bit and I'm just going to kind of rock from side to side. And again, I'm mainly doing this because I do feel some kind of stiffness and soreness in my left hip and I am trying to work it out, but this is also a great way to work on external rotation of the hip as well as internal rotation. So really feel what it's like when you push that knee down. Just a few more here, side to side. You really don't need to be opening the legs up too wide and you can absolutely have more of a bend in your knees. And hopefully that should feel a little better. And then when you're ready, you can just come to stillness. Make sure you have your knees and your toes pointing up. Let's find a side body stretch first. Left arm reaches up and over. Try to anchor that left sit bone into the mat. Roll your left shoulder back. Let your head dangle so your neck is relaxed here. Coming up, we'll go to the other side. Right arm reaches up and over. Push your right sit bone down. Come all the way back up and this time let's fold over towards our right leg and right knee. And you can lift on up. Same thing to the other side, folding towards the left. Come back up through to center, and now one last little forward fold here. Go right down the middle. Stretching out of the lower back, even here. Draw the lower belly in for extra support. And let's bring our hands in, lift on up. Let's find our tabletop pose. We're just gonna take a few hip circles from here. So hands under your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, and you can just trace some circles as small or as big as is comfortable. 
Keep your breath smooth and steady as you do this. One more. And coming back to neutral, this time go ahead and kick your right heel up towards the sky and you're gonna take big hip circles with your right leg. Try to engage your lower belly and abdominals a little bit here so you're not collapsing. And the next time you do your circle, you're gonna step that foot forward to the top of the mat on the outer edge of your right hand. So coming into your lizard pose as you melt your hips forward and down. Think of rolling your shoulders down and away from your ears. You might choose to stay as you are. You can add a little twist, right hand to your right thigh, push away from it, maybe looking over that right shoulder. Coming back through to center, you're going to straighten your right leg flex your right foot and walk your hands a little bit more towards the left side of your mat. And I'm gonna bend my knee a little bit here. I'm gonna start to press my hips back behind me and then counter stretch and reach with your arms. So just a really different way of working into our hamstrings, a variation of Ardha Hanumanasana, our half splits pose. So traction out of your lower back, press those hips back, and then come all the way back through to center. You're going to bend into that right knee and step it back into your tabletop pose. And let's do some circles to the other direction this time. So through your hips first. Just getting that motion through your low back. Coming back through to center, kick that left heel up and trace some circles here with your knee and with your foot. Keep both elbows straight. Pull your lower belly in and we'll step it forward into your lizard pose at the top of the mat. So I'm making sure to keep my left knee directly over the top of my ankle, both palms to the inside of that leg. So opening through those right hip flexors. Try to relax your shoulders and maybe add your twist, bringing your left hand to your left thigh, pushing away from it as you open through your chest. And a variation of our half splits, bring your hand back down, start to straighten that left leg and flex your foot. Walk your hands over to the right this time and you can bend a little bit into your left knee. You're gonna start pressing your hips back behind you and at the same time, providing a counter reach and counter stretch by walking your hands further out in front of you. As if someone was pulling back on your hips and pulling forward on your wrists. Keep digging and pressing your left heel into the mat. Use that as your anchoring point. And coming all the way back up through to center into your tabletop pose, we'll lower all the way down to our bellies. And go ahead and slide your forearms out in front of you. Find your Sphinx pose. Push down into the tops of the feet, roll your shoulders back, and just pull your heart forward keeping your chin parallel to the ground. See if you can push down into your hip bones so you're not just compressing through your low back, but really getting a nice expansion through your chest. And let's go ahead and release all the way down. You can slide your palms back behind you. We'll take five little baby cobras. So I want the tops of your feet to stay pushing into the floor. Try not to lift them off the ground. This is upper body only. As you inhale, lift your upper body, lift your palms off the mat. 
exhale lower back down four more like this inhale squeeze and lift exhale release inhale up and down two more breathe in push into the tops of the feet push into your hips and lower last one inhale you're gonna hold here go ahead and reach your arms back behind you and now if you'd like transition shalambasana your locust pose legs lift off the floor back of the neck is long so you should be able to breathe deeply here otherwise you've gone too far into this pose and let's release bring your hands out in front of you and your forearms just for support we're going to bend into our right knee taking a little quad stretch so i like to just provide a little padding for my forehead and you're pulling your right heel towards the glute and the key thing here is to push your pubic bone into the floor while also pushing your right knee into the mat trying to isolate your quads and your hip flexors slow deep breaths carefully release that right leg we'll go and switch sides bend your left knee and pull your left heel in towards you big breath in here and go ahead and release that left foot down let's press back wide like a child's pose big toes together knees as wide as you would like them to be as you press your hips back and slide your arms out in front of you forehead lowers down to the ground Three more breaths. And let's start to lift on up and we'll make our way to our first downward facing dog. So establish your foundation here, hands shoulder width distance apart, feet are hip width distance apart. And then you can go ahead and lift your way up and back pushing your chest towards your thighs as you lift your tailbone up towards the sky. And we'll join at the center of our mat so you can walk your feet a couple inches and walk your hands back at the same time. Finding your ragdoll fold, you might wanna widen your feet if this feels a little too narrow. Maybe holding on to your elbows and adding a gentle sway side to side. Release your hands down, bend your knees even more, push into your heels in order to roll all the way up inch by inch, standing at the top of the mat. And I'm just gonna turn to face towards you, but you can stay as you are at home. And we'll find our Vrikshasana tree pose. Let's begin on the right side. So you're gonna stand on your right leg and you're gonna bring your left foot somewhere to the inside of that leg, maybe at the shin level or maybe up towards your inner thigh. And you can choose to have your hands at your heart. Maybe you'll want to open up your arms. If you have your leg up high, like what I'm doing here, Ooh, tough to look at the camera <laughs> and also keep your balance. You can grab a hold of your left ankle with your left hand and we'll add a side bend. So right arm can reach up and over and you can just add a little bit of a lean. not taking the pose or taking yourself too seriously. Falling out and wobbling is normal, it's no big deal. Let's come back up and through to center. Hands at your heart, Utkatasana chair pose. 
Big toes together, heels apart, sink down low. And let's add a twist from here, left elbow over the top of your right knee. Before you twist any further, I want you to look down at your knees. If your left one is further than the right, shift it back. You wanna keep your hips leveled. This is a twist for your upper body or mid to upper back. Try to lift your chest off of your thighs while keeping your hips low, rolling that right shoulder back. Come back through to center into your chair pose. Push to lift on up. One last little pose from here. So leaning on your right leg again, and you're just gonna draw that left thigh and left knee in towards you. And take a few ankle rolls flexing and pointing through your left foot. Think of really pulling up through that right quad so you're lifting that kneecap up. And see if you can add a quad stretch balancing here. So you're going to lift that leg back behind you and maybe reach back with one or with both hands. Same thing as when we were doing this lying down on our bellies. I want you to think of reaching and lengthening your tailbone down. Roll your shoulders back. So when we were laying down, we were trying to push our hip bones into the floor. Imagine you're doing this even here. Really targeting left quads, and left thigh. And let's release, shake it out. Let's do that same thing to the other side, beginning with our Vrikshasana tree pose. You're gonna establish your foundation on that left leg and bring your right foot wherever is appropriate to you. And again, maybe your hands stay at your heart. Maybe you choose to reach your arms up or you can add a side bend, grabbing a hold of your right ankle and your left arm will reach up and over. Totally normal for one side to feel easier than the other. And balance does tend to change day to day. Notice if you're holding your breath. Come all the way back up through to center, hands at your heart, chair pose, Utkatasana with a twist. So sink down first. Notice how right now your knees are in line, your hips are in line, keep them that way. Even as you bring your right elbow to your left knee, so shift that right knee back. And then see if you can twist a little deeper by pushing your elbow into your knee and also pushing your palms in towards each other and rolling that left shoulder further back. So a little bit of strength here. You might need to readjust your pelvis. The longer we're here, the more the knees and the, uh, the hips tend to shift. And coming back through to center, press the lift on up. Leaning onto your left leg again, let's pull our right knee in towards the belly. Lengthening out, draw your shoulders down and away from your ears and you can roll a little bit through your right foot and right ankle. Try not to dig your toes into the mat. Adding your standing quad stretch, so you're gonna try to touch your right heel to your glute. Hold onto that foot with one or both hands. Squeeze your shoulder blades behind you. Lengthen your tailbone down. Trying to keep your knees in line with each other. And let's release, really shake it out. Go ahead and widen your feet. So if you were facing the top of the mat, go and face towards the long edge of your mat this time. Feet parallel to the top of the mat, hands on your hips. As you inhale, lift and lengthen. And on the exhale, fold all the way down. You can walk your hands back as you relax your upper back, your shoulders, your neck, your head. Just let yourself get heavy as you dangle here. (sighs) 
deep belly breaths. And you can hold here for about another five breaths or so, or if you'd like to add a twist, you're gonna walk your hands out in front of you until your chest is about parallel to the mat. Bring your left hand underneath your head and reach your right arm up. Big open twist here. Breathe in. And let's release. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Left arm rises. Only looking up if this is okay for your neck. Otherwise, please leave that out. And coming back down. So if you were hanging out in your forward fold, walk your hands out so we're all here. You're going to turn your right toes to point forward towards the mat. And I want you to bend deeply into that right knee. So this is a really deep lunge. You can also bring your right hand to the inside of your right thigh to help push it open even more. So you have a warrior two stance with your legs but we're staying nice and low. Really engage the muscles through your legs. We're gonna lift up into Virabhadrasana two, so coming up to your warrior two. Arms reach out, palms facing down to the floor. Keep your shoulders over your hips. And let's reverse, left hand down, right arm up. Keep your upper body as is and just straighten your right leg. Into your triangle pose, Trikonasana. You might need to narrow your stance a little bit. I know for me, this is too wide. Left arm up, right hand down, maybe holding onto your shin or pushing the back of your hand to the inside of your calf. and push down into your feet. Let's lift all the way back up and we'll come back into that wide-legged fold. So readjust your stance. Feet are parallel to the shorter edges. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold all the way back down. <sighs> Instead of doing that twist the second time around, this time we're gonna walk our hands over towards the right leg. Hold on to whatever you can and fold on in, trying to bring your forehead or your knee, or sorry, your nose to your knee. And switching sides, walk your hands over towards your left leg and left foot, pull yourself in. Coming back through to center, walk your hands out in front of you so you're parallel to the mat. And you're gonna turn the left toes to point towards the back of your mat, bend into your left knee so you have those warrior two legs. And you can use your left hand to push that thigh open a little bit more, sinking your hips nice and low. Deep breaths. You can engage the muscles in your legs to help push your feet into the floor, lifting up warrior two towards the back of your mat. Let's reverse, right hand down, left arm up. Straighten your left leg. Into your triangle pose, you might need to walk that right foot in slightly. If you feel like you're opened up a little too wide to the legs, that can be a little hard to balance in triangle pose if your stance is too wide. One more big deep breath here. Use your abdominals to lift yourself back up. And now let's all turn to face towards the top of the mat, stepping up. Hands at your heart, let's take a little flow. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift, flat back. Plant your palms, you're just gonna step back into your plank pose and go ahead and lower down to your forearms. So a forearm plank, keep your hips nice and low. And now let's go ahead and roll onto our right heel and right forearm. So your form side plank, maybe you'd like to stay here, or you can do like a form wild thing, bringing your left foot back behind you and trying to reach that left arm up and over. You're not gonna go very far here. 
same thing to the other side. Drop that left forearm down, roll over onto your left foot. Get stable in this side plank first, and then maybe step the right foot back behind you. See if you can lift the pelvis up a little bit more. Back through to center. Let's find our dolphin pose. Walk your feet in, lift your hips up, push your chest towards your thighs. And knees come down to the mat. Go ahead and lift up right away. We'll make our way into our camel pose. So you want your knees and your legs to be hip width distance apart. I really want you to lengthen your tailbone down to firm up through your core. Bring your palms towards your lower back for support. Squeeze your shoulder blades behind you and think of lifting up and then back. Any variation of this pose, maybe you bring your hands resting on your heels. Think of pushing your hips forward. And we'll lift on up and just let yourself sit back on your heels. Take a little twist, left hand to your right knee. Open through your chest. Second side, right hand to your left knee. Coming into rabbit pose, a really great counter stretch for our camel. So you can just bring the crown of your head to the mat, hold onto your heels and lift your seat. Feel that nice stretch along your spine. <sighs> and release back balasana you can keep this an easy child's pose with your arms alongside your legs take five breaths here and really breathe into your lower back <sighs> and we'll take one last heart opening pose here coming into our puppy stretch so from hands and knees, keep your hips stacked, or your, yeah, your hips stacked over your knees and walk your hands out in front of you before melting down. And you can either do this with your forehead on the mat or some people do like to bring their chins instead. It's just a little too much for me. So I like to keep a slight tuck of the chin to keep the back of the neck long. You're still trying to melt your heart down towards the floor. One more big deep breath. And go ahead and walk it back. And let's find our pigeon pose from here. Right knee slides behind that right wrist you might need to stretch a little bit further back big breath in here as you open up through your chest and now you're either going to just fold straight down traditional pigeon pose or if you'd like you can add a twist so like a thread the needle variation of pigeon your left arm is going to go underneath you left shoulder and left ear drop down to the floor and you can bring your right hand rest towards your lower back, or you might be able to even hold on somewhere towards your right foot. Try not to push yourself too far into this one. It's definitely an intense stretch, but it shouldn't be going past your edge. You have nothing to prove here in any of these practices. This is an opportunity for you to be in tune with your body and to check in with yourself, doing whatever feels best to you. Take one more full breath like this and we'll slowly come back up. So release the twist first, push into the floor and we'll come back tabletop pose. It might feel good just to extend your right leg back behind you you can do some hip circles just whatever is intuitive not overthinking this and let's find pigeon on the other side left knee slides behind your left wrist square off the pelvis here 
and take a breath just to find some length as you open through your heart and either dive straight forward or add thread the needle right arm underneath you right shoulder and right ear lowers down maybe adding your bind your twist let's lift on up and we'll find downward dog one last time stepping it back might feel good just stretch that leg first and then whenever you're ready lifting your hips and I'm not doing any vinyasas in this morning practice but of course you are welcome to take one now if you'd like otherwise just stretch everything out find lots of length and we can bring our knees down to the mat when you're ready swing your legs out in front of you and we'll lower down all the way happy baby pose ananda balasana draw your knees wide hold on to your big toes or to your feet as you stack your ankles over your knees using your arms to press those knees open a little wider you might rock a little side to side. Release your feet flat to the floor. Let's end with a banana pose before coming into Shavasana. So you can move your hips over to the right. Bring your head and shoulders over to the left, and as you straighten your legs, walk your ankles also to the left. You can grab a hold of your upper arms or your wrists, and maybe cross your right ankle over the left one. So I want you to imagine that someone is pushing down on your right hip. Don't let yourself roll over to the left. This is a side body stretch. Side bends are an excellent way to alleviate lower back discomfort, especially when we've done a lot of side bends, or sorry, a lot of back bends. And just let yourself relax and soften here. Five breaths. to uncross your ankles, bend your knees, just so you can more easily lift your hips, bring them to the left, and lift your head and shoulders, bring them to the right. Straighten your legs, walk your feet to the right bottom corner of your mat, and maybe cross your left ankle over top. Try to push your left hip down. How do you want to carry yourself throughout your day? Now that we've moved some of our energy around, you've alleviated some tension throughout your body. Notice what is true for you, what is coming through and what your intention for the day is. Let's uncross and make our way to Shavasana, our final resting pose. So I'm going to do this one reclined. If you're worried that you're going to fall asleep this morning, you're welcome to close with a seated meditation and said, we're not going to be here very long, just about two minutes. 
and using this time to process your practice Show yourself some gratitude and to set your intention for the day. Let's wake ourselves up with a bit of movement and some deeper breathing. Stretch your arms up overhead, really stretch everything out here. Let's roll to one side, come up to take a seat. Bring your hands together at your heart. Let's chant Om together one time. Inhale to chant, big breath in. Thank you so very much for doing this morning yoga practice with me. I hope you feel energized and all stretched out. We did quite a few hip openers and back bends and balancing poses. So well-rounded flow. Before you go, please let me know how this one went for you. Do subscribe and hopefully I'll practice again with you tomorrow morning for more morning yoga.